Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making some skillet fried squash. Now this is an incredibly easy recipe and incredibly easy technique. It's the perfect side dish for just about any meal. Even if you're grilling, you can make this and um, have it for a side dish with all your cookouts this summer. And it's a great, simple, easy way to use up all that squash you got coming out of your garden. What we need is squash, of course. And any summer squash will work in this zucchini the yellow squash straight crooked neck it does not matter whatever color zucchini you got that'll work and you can even put eggplant in here if you wanted to chop some of that up and you can add a lot of other stuff to it too and some chopped onion and a, something to fry it in I've got some leftover bacon grease here. If you've been saving your bacon grease, this is a great recipe for that bacon grease, but you can fry anything in your bacon grease. You could use butter or you could use something healthier like olive oil or grapeseed oil. And I've got some spices here. I have a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and a little bit of sugar, just a little bit. You want maybe like a quarter teaspoon per squash. And it's entirely optional, but it changes the flavor of it and makes it taste much better. My granny even always used a little bit of sugar in her squash when she fried it. But you're using it like a spice, not like a sweetener. And it changes everything. Um, I'm going to get my pan warming up here. You do want to heat your pan up a little bit first before you put anything else in it. Um, and you want to start with your fat, whatever kind you want to use, that's fine. And you don't need much. Um, I've got a couple of squash cut up here and about an onion about the size of the one I got sitting here. So what I've got chopped up is about what I've got sitting here. Now you can double, triple this, whatever you want to. You want to make at least half a squash per person. You can even make a whole squash per person, which will make your whole meal go farther. And it will, you know, it's easy on your budget. And this time of year, even if you're not getting this out of your garden, squash is really cheap. Everybody has it on sale. So it makes a great summer side dish. You could add cheese to this once you get everything fried. You could even make some of that cream sauce that we did a video far back, I don't know, a few weeks ago, and add the cream sauce to it, put some cheese on top of it, maybe some cracker crumbs, and put it in the oven and turn this into a casserole. Super, super easy. I'm going to go ahead and add my onions first because I do want to saute them. Sauteing them is going to add a lot of flavor into your squash. Um, we've talked about squash before and on its own it doesn't have a great deal of flavor. It takes on the flavor of the stuff you add to it. Now I'm going to share a little squash tip with you. I sprinkled a little bit of salt on this squash and it's been sitting for about 15 minutes. Now if you want to use squash in a casserole or you want to saute it like this, it has a lot of water in it. And the water tends to make it taste mushy, it makes your casseroles mushy. If you'll put a little salt on it and let it sit for a few minutes, watch what happens. Well, that's not much. Um, let me see here. Let's try to drain it where I've got it all in this bowl. It works better if you have it spread out on your cutting board or something. You can get more water out of it. Um, I got a couple of tablespoons out of it there, but you can see it's still absolutely soaked. And the longer you let it sit, the more water that that salt draws out. And it'll just soak these paper towels. And if you get some of that water out before you start sauteing it, or before you put it in your casserole, it will stop it from having that really, really mushy texture. 
Well, I've probably got with the paper towels and what's in the cup, maybe two, two and a half tablespoons of water out of these two squash. That's really gonna help in cooking it. I've got about a tablespoon in there and I've soaked these three paper towels. But you get the idea. And the longer you let it sit with that salt on it, the more water that will come out of it. And you can even cut it up and stick it in the fridge for a couple of hours if you're gonna be grilling it and get some of that water out of it. Just cut it up and then stick it in the fridge in a bowl and drain the water before you grill it. And you can grill it, just slice it in half and grill it. Or you could cut it up like what I've done here and wrap it up with the onions and a little butter or something in aluminum foil and put it on the grill that way. I've done it that way several times and it tastes really, really good. And even add other vegetables in it, you know, potatoes and peppers and stuff like that. So you can kind of add anything in with squash that you want to. But once you get a little of the water off of it, and you don't even have to do that, that's just kind of optional. It makes it cook a little faster and it keeps it from being so mushy. A lot of people don't like squash because of that really mushy texture that it can get. But if you get a little of the water out first, it helps. Now, another thing that helps with that mushy texture is don't cover this. Let it cook without a lid on it and that way the steam will escape and that will get rid of more of the water. And my onions definitely got brown in just that few minutes, but that's the way you want them. You want them brown, that's when they taste good. You could even mix hot peppers in this if you wanted to. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of my spices. I'm not gonna use quite all these, so I'm gonna mix them up because I don't wanna get all the salt or all the sugar. I want to kind of get an even amount and it really not much sugar and you could use brown sugar or even a little bit of honey if you wanted to if you didn't want to use just the plain white sugar but something that adds just a tiny bit of sweetness really brings out some flavor in your squash or you can go hot you can add pretty much any spices you want to this. If you have a spice blend that you really, really like, add it to it. Um, the squash just doesn't have much flavor on its own. It takes on the flavor of what you put in it. So you add any flavors you like to it. I'm gonna turn mine down just a little bit, but I am gonna cook it on at least medium because I want it to get brown before it gets mushy. Again, you know, you get that texture with squash that a lot of folks just don't like when it starts to get the, the really mushy flake or really mushy texture. And you don't wanna do that because what's the point cooking something if nobody's gonna eat it? And if you're growing it in your garden, you certainly don't wanna go to all the trouble to to plant it and tend it and harvest it and then have nobody eat it. And this is a recipe that folks will eat. Um, we also have up a really simple breaded squash recipe and it works with yellow squash and zucchini. I'm gonna link it in this video. Um, it's just super easy and tastes beyond good. I get a lot of comments folks say that breading falls off of their squash and their fried green tomatoes and even uh, pork chops and chicken and stuff like that. Here's a tip. If you bread it and then let it sit for at least 15 minutes, no matter what it is, before you fry it, that breading will stick much better. And make sure your pan is really hot before you add your breaded whatever it is, whether it's vegetables or meat. That'll keep your uh, breading on what you're frying and not in your pan. Hot pan, hot oil, and let it sit for 15 minutes before you put it in, which has nothing to do with this because we didn't bread this. And because this isn't breaded, it's super easy, super simple, and really fast. You'll want to adjust the spices in this to suit your taste. And like I said, you can add any spices that you like. If you want something hot, maybe put some Italian spices in it of some kind. 
oregano or something like that. Add in some other seasoning vegetables like hot peppers, celery, um, even a carrot chopped up in it is good or grated and put in there. It adds a lot of flavor to it. Carrots are a really flavorful vegetable where the squash is not. And you can also do just a big vegetable side and you could add some chopped up potatoes in here um, and carrots again. Even stuff like broccoli or cauliflower you can add to this and do just a big vegetable side with a lot of different vegetables in it. But I know folks get a lot of squash when they garden and a lot of folks are gardening for the first time so you probably are overwhelmed with squash and just don't know what to do with it. Well this is a good one. Um, keep an eye on it. Once the water starts to evaporate out it will burn really quick. Uh, as long as that water's cooking out it'll um, continue to fry without burning but once it starts to dry out it'll brown and then it'll burn fast. You might have to adjust your fat in it too if it starts to burn before it starts to brown or before it gets tender enough and you know it's like sticking and starting to burn. Just to add a little more fat, whatever you're using. And you can mix fats. You can do just a little bit of baking grease and then do some oil and you know healthier oil and that little bit of baking grease will give you the baking grease flavor without all the cholesterol. You could do the same thing with butter. Do a little bit of butter and then add a little oil to it. At least cut it in half. And, you know, that makes it a little healthier, but you still get the flavor. While I'm letting mine brown just a little bit, I want to share Second Chronicles 7.14 with you. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, that I shall hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. It's almost Independence Day and this year when we're celebrating our nation's birthday, at least for me and I know for a lot of you, it feels like our nation is turning to God again, turning in the right direction. Um, and I, I know there's stuff in the news that's not so good, but we are making positive steps to turn back toward being a godly nation again and making God a part of our daily lives. And while this is going on, I want to encourage you to show the world God's love and not His judgment. Um, God is perfectly capable of carrying that out himself and I think we've all felt that for a long time and we're probably all feeling it a little bit now but now is the time for us to shine as Christians and for us to let the world see his love so whatever you do right now the most important thing as a Christian is for you to show the world God's love in you and please don't stop praying. You know, the work is far from done. Most of you know that. And we are far from where we need to be as a nation. And we're probably all pretty far from where we need to be as individuals too. So please keep praying for our country. Keep praying for each other. And take care of each other through this time that we're going through. Because things are hard. Food is expensive and it's hard to find sometimes so check on your neighbors and make sure you take care of your family i mean there's lots of folks we have people in our own families who are struggling and if you have extra make sure you share it with those people who are struggling okay it's starting to brown now um, and i don't know if you can see that on the camera you probably can um, if you're a regular viewer, you might have noticed in our last couple of videos that our 
overhead view has gotten better. Well, I finally did get around to ordering a new camera, which has much better resolution. And Alex's editing is improving drastically with every video. So, you know, you'll be able to see more of what I'm doing and you'll have better views. And the camera was purchased in part by um, some of the gifts that y'all have sent. So thank you so much for them. And God has really just blessed us so much this year. I don't even know where to start. But it has been a while since I have said thank you to all the folks who send stuff. I get cards in the mail every single week and letters. Um, and I do want to do a, kind of a mail call again and show you some of the stuff that has arrived this summer because I haven't done that in a while. And I'll try to get that up pretty soon. But I want to take a minute to thank all of you who have supported us and all of you who continue to pray for us. I mean, it's... It's comforting, it's encouraging, it, encouraging, and it's uplifting to know that people are praying for you. And I want to thank all of you who comment and who watch and who share the videos. I mean, your support is the reason why we're still here. So thank you all very much for being a part of the Hillbilly Kitchen family and for continuing to love us. We love all of you, and you are all a part of our family, and your support just gives us so much hope, and we want you to know that we're praying for you, too. Our family as a whole is praying for all of you, so thank you. Okay. It's definitely browning now. Now, at this point, the squash is all done, and the onions are definitely cooked. And it's just kind of a matter of sauteing it until it gets to that point where you want it. Um, the more you fry it, the drier your squash is going to be. And like I said, a lot of folks don't like that real mushy texture that squash gets. Also, the crisper it's going to get. All of these little brown parts on these squash are going to be slightly crisp. So you just fry it until it gets where you want. And you can fry it until there's like almost no color left. The more you cook it, the more water it loses and the more nutrients that it loses. And a lot of folks like their vegetables, especially stuff like squash, just barely cooked. And that's fine because it has more nutrients in it. You just, you know, make it the way you like it. When you're cooking at home, you can do that. Try it a few times. I mean, if you're growing squash in your garden, you've got so much, you can afford to try this recipe until you get it exactly the way you like it. And this is really more of a technique than it is a recipe. Don't forget, you can add some sauce to this or cheese, just sprinkle a little cheese on it. it totally changes the flavor and it even changes the texture. You could even add cheese in this while it's frying and kind of fry the cheese a little bit, which is like a wow. But play with it, you know, make it the way you like it, add in seasonings that you like. And I promise you just that little bit of sugar is not going to be enough to um, really hurt anybody's glucose levels. And it's not going to be so much that it makes you gain a ton of weight. And it is going to make the squash much, much better. I mean, you know, a quarter teaspoon per squash this size is plenty. It just brings out a much better flavor. I'm going to link in the end of this right here where we're at now some maybe potato salad and stuff because this is going up right up before July 4th. And... I'm also, I've been linking in our playlist that has all of our budget recipes. That's kind of at the end of every video. So if you need some cheap meal ideas, side dishes, and main dishes, you can find them in that playlist. I want to thank y'all so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And share our videos with your friends. 
Until next time, remember to put God first.